It's 105.9 The Big Kahuna, Honolulu's only classic rock. Dave Lawrence here, the Workforce Box at noon, and I am proud to welcome a special guest who's tonight and tomorrow at Pipeline Cafe, Mr. Robert Schimmel. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Good, Good. to have you in the house, man. Welcome nice to, to the islands. Yeah, it's beautiful out today. Now, you got here, as I remember on our phone call in advance of, of your trip out here, you said you were going to be going to Maui first? Yeah, went to Maui first. Uh, got there uh, on Monday. I was in Miami. I left Miami Sunday, went to L.A., and then Monday morning left, got to uh, Maui. And then Tuesday, like around 12.30, I said, let's go do something. And uh, my wife said, hey, we heard this drive you could take up to Hana or whatever it is. Well, you don't do that at 12.30. <laughs> you do that at like, you know, 5.30 in the morning. And, and we got up there, there, and it started raining. And, and you know, I have a six-month-old, so he's in the back seat. So I went in the back with him to... You know, calm him down. Little and Sam. Got, uh, got uh, majorly car sick in there. I never get car sick ever, and those turns were just way too much. And, and the last time you were in Maui, I remember you said you were out doing some, uh, you were out on a boat or something, and, and, and they were telling you about the turtles and not yeah. to be feeding them beer. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get out with the turtles anymore? No. No, I didn't I actually didn't even go in the water in Maui. There's no time. There was just no time. No time yet. And what have you done here so far since Nothing. you've been on this island? Nothing. Nothing. After got... this, I'm going to start doing stuff. Yeah, we got to get you out there and, and do some stuff. Now, did your daughter come along for the trip? No. No? What's, what's she up to? She's, uh, she's actually working with the casting people, the WB, right now. And this is the, and she has jessicaschimmel.com, right? Yeah. It's her own website. Yeah, and she's uh, you know working with them and trying to find somebody to play her. And this is for the pilot. Yeah, and she called me last night and said, Dad, they can't find anybody, and they're asking me if I would take acting lessons, and I'm going, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Robert, as a crazy pilot you may not know about, it's going to be on the WB, and, and it's with Howard Stern's yeah, production company? Yeah. Talk, talk about that a little bit. I was on the show with him, and, uh, and my daughter came on with me, and she wore a T-shirt that she had made that said, uh, my dad married my best friend and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. And he thought it was really great and talked about it for like an hour and a half. And then the WB called and said, this is a TV show. Right. You marry your daughter's friend and the three of you are living together. And, and so, is that how it went down, though? Yeah. So, and, and your daughter's like 25? Yeah. And, and, and my and wife's 29. 29. And just to get some clarity and perspective, your age would be... I'll be okay. 54 next month. Okay, wow. So that's a, you're, you are the Lance Armstrong of the, uh, or whatever you said last time. That was pretty Lance impressive. Lance Armstrong of the uh, midlife mid, set. Midlife set. Yeah. yeah, that's very cool. So, and uh, now, how did you? How did you first hook up? Was it through your daughter that you hooked up with? with uh... They worked together, and uh, you know, we met and we were just talking and everything. And then, you know, one day we went out. And I didn't want my daughter to know, and then she found out, and said, "Dad, go out with somebody your own age." <laughs> And then you're on Howard. What did Howard think? He must have loved that. He thought it was great. He wanted me to bring my wife on, and I said no. And then he wanted my ex-wife and my wife on. I said no. And so is this going to be like kind of stuff. is this going to be like Osborne style? How's it going to be? Uh, probably more like uh, curb your enthusiasm and tight okay. or something like that. It'll be like uh, some stuff in front of a live audience, some in front of you know single camera. Yeah, that Larry David show is good. I like that show. Yeah. That one's definitely happening. That is a cool thing. What's the time frame on that? When are we going to uh, see that? Shoot the pilot uh, in February or March. We'll know in May if it's picked up, and then uh, we'll premiere in the fall. All right, cool. We'll have to get, you have to get back in touch with us to give us a oh, little yeah. plug right before that, and, and we'll definitely give that some juice. Now, in your uh, some of your hysterically funny material, I know you've always commented uh, commented on like the hotels and things that you've been in. Where are they got you shacking up now when you're in town with us? <laughs> well, I'm not going to say <laughs> Are you in? Uh, are you here in town? Yeah. Okay. Is it nice? Any any interesting amenities? Um, I had to fax something to my agent, and uh, I went to the business center, and they said that it was seven fifty for the first page, and a dollar a page after that. And I said, "Well, then don't send the first page." <laughs> and uh, they didn't get it. <laughs> And uh, and you have you have a lot of other interesting things that you can do in town. I was trying to think of some things we could take you around the island. Yeah, maybe. I did. I did Pearl Harbor last time I was here. And that's a little bit of a heavy one. Yeah, that was really heavy. And then I saw the movie because I did. I saw Pearl Harbor six years ago, and then I went and saw the movie Pearl Harbor. And boy, Ben Affleck can really ruin history. <laughs> he does sort of take it down a, a few notches. Yeah, it's just not the same thing. <laughs> it really is. Have you been uh, Have you been following the Michael Jackson thing? Uh, a little bit. Not not totally. No, 
But it's kind of neat that that happened in a way, only because I live in L.A. and now they don't, you know, you don't hear about Kobe every five minutes. <laughs> they have a new thing to follow. The new thing is Michael Jackson. And they're on that thing hot too, huh? Well, if Michael Jackson got arrested, that'd be kind of interesting because that would be a really good episode of Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to be running for sure. Uh, and how about the political thing? It's kind of heating up. You, you staying on top of it? No. no, you're staying out of that? Not no. checking it out? No. You divide the audience too much when you start talking about that stuff. With the These politics? Things. Yeah, I yeah, really do. I understand. Uh, last time I was in D.C., uh, I was talking about, uh, you know, Bush not... Uh, wanting to allow stem cell research in this country and you know that's a horrible thing for people like me and uh you know as a cancer survivor and and christopher reeves and sure and, uh, uh j michael Fo michael j fox and you know people who could really benefit from yeah it. who could really benefit from it and you know the church influences the government on you know whether you could do that or not and i think it's kind of weird that you know for somebody that has uh, no problem with uh guys having sex with young boys the <laughs> to say that you can't have stem cell research. You'd think if anybody would be into cloning, it would be the church. I mean, you know, if there's some young kid they like, and then, you know, the kid doesn't want to do it anymore, they could always, you know, screw the clone. <laughs> so... That's funny, dude. You're out of control, man. And uh, what are the other things that, that you've been following? You always, used to, you always used to have, like, a handle on some of the other crazy things that have been going on. We were talking about Siegfried and Roy last time yeah. I talked to you. yeah. Well, he's coming home, actually. Yeah, he's, he's going to be home for the holidays. And they got the cat at home waiting. Again. That's right. A little reunion. That's right. I would love to sneak up behind him and go, rah. <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. You know what? That's, that's, you could be sure there are never going to be any lion acts in Vegas anymore after that. None of that kind of stuff. Now, another star just got hurt, too, actually. Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. You've been checking that out? Well, you know, it's so weird. I, I remember reading, like, a few days before that, that he was going to try to sue his doctor because he said that he was doped up for the yeah, show he said that he was on pain medication and that his doctor had got him hooked to pain medication yeah i read that too and uh and he said he doesn't like pain medication he doesn't want to be on it and then all of a sudden he's in like a you know flipped over in a all-terrain vehicle that story wasn't enough press he had to follow it up like 48 hours later 48 hours later and say well look now i gotta take the pain medication i got a broken collarbone and uh eight ribs he's really he got broke a lot of stuff yeah we're rooting for him hopefully hopefully he's gonna be all right and that's odd because yeah. he's a reality tv star too yeah, but that's not reality to me. It really isn't. And I'll tell you why. Because they know the, you know, reality TV would be having cameras hidden in somebody's house and not telling them they're there. For the candid aspect. Right. And just have people living there and videotaping them the whole time. And then after like six months, then start airing it when you're done with them. Right, right. I like that so idea. So there's no way they can come back. <laughs> no, because he knows. I mean, look, when he wakes up in the morning and goes to brush his teeth and his kid's in there, you know, then uh, and the camera's following him. I mean, you know, he knows he's on camera. So I think the behavior is not exactly the way it would be if he knew there was no camera. Is that quite there. pure reality? Yeah. And I'd like to see the the real reality. How's yours? Is yours going to be different than that? Yeah, it's not going to be. It's it's. Uh, there's going to be stuff about my real life in there. And, uh, you know, I mean, the demographic of the WB is 14 to 20 five-year-old women i think so it's going to be a lot of stuff with the daughter and the they're going to dig jessica wife. yeah they're going to dig that in a big way and they'll go yeah and robert schimmel's in it and uh and what about like some of the you were just talking about uh ozzy and, and his medication re regimen and stuff you were last time we were on talking about some of you know you've been through cancer and, and one of the the things that you picked up as a, as a bonus from that i guess you could look at it as was your ability to now puff and and uh yeah partake they uh the doctors told me to do that when I was on chemotherapy. They told was, you to. Yeah. Well, first they give you Marinol pills, and uh, which is, you know, it's... Uh, pot pills. They're pot the pills, but they don't stay lit, really. And, uh, <laughs> and it's not the same thing. And, then the guy, and I was with my mom and dad. I mean, I was in the Mayo Clinic with my parents, and the guy said, you should consider smoking marijuana. It'll help with your nausea and your appetite. And my mom and dad are sitting there, you know, devastated. And I'm thinking, this is a dream come true. I got a doctor telling my parents that I got to smoke pot. So, uh, and then I tried it, and I hadn't smoked pot since high school. So, either it's a lot stronger now than it was then, or something else happened to me, or I don't know what, but uh, I had a major anxiety attack. And I remember I was telling my ex wife, because I was with my her then, I said, I'm, I'm fr freaking out. And she said, Well, of course you are. You got stoned, and you have cancer, and people die from that. Yeah, keep talking like that. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of head I want to be in right now. 
and I tried to get something to eat, and I could see like the atomic substructure of the of the food. It was really really bizarre. And then my mom came over, and I said I'm having an anxiety attack, and she said you smoke pot, right? You happy? So then she gave me a Xanax and said take this, and then you know, <laughs> she did. And then and then I ate two boxes of ice cream sandwiches, and I gained like six pounds in in uh, one week. So and no the, puffing with the parents though. They won't do it, no. My parents are my parents were both in Auschwitz during the war. So when the doctor told me that I could do it, my mom said, You think we had pot when we were in the concentration camp? <laughs> what? You're like, Mom, how do I answer that? I know. That's like the ultimate trump card. <laughs> yeah, it is, for sure, man. Uh, and any other features about the show that are going to be up there? And I'm really looking forward to this, to seeing... Uh, All new material. Nothing from HBO. Nothing from the HBO. No, because I'm working on a new new hour for uh, HBO. So and that's HBO Unprotected. If folks yeah. want to pick that up. Yeah. And it comes clean. And if you buy the CD, I can buy this car. And I have a new CD that just came out. It's on my website only right now, and it's called Resurrection. Uh, not to be confused with Tupac's Resurrection. <laughs> this is spelled differently. It's, um, no rab tracks on yours. No. This I, guy has more CDs coming out dead. Uh, Tupac. Yeah. He did a lot in his short life, I guess. <laughs> And he did alive. It's amazing. He's got a, he has a movie out, and he's dead. I mean, jeez. We should all be so lucky. Do you know, uh, my agent is best friends with the agent that represents all the dead celebrities in L.A. You know, there's an agent that it represents, that. like, all these dead celebrities. That's why they have Fred Astaire with that vacuum cleaner coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that guy represents his ghost, I guess. and uh, Hawking out the, <laughs> the estate. Yeah. That's pretty rough, man. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that'll be the case for some of us. RobertSchimmel.com, correct, if you yep. want to check that out? Yep, everything's on there. Plus a journal of me going through what I went through with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it's uh, tomorrow is the anniversary. will be three years in remission, so I can't think of a better place to be than here and on stage celebrating that three years because really when they told me that I had it, and they said that uh, I might not be here in six months, so that's a big thing to be here three years later. I'm glad you're here with us, brother, for sure. Me too. For sure, after all these years. And one other quick kind of on that note, you... I thought I remembered reading in some of your press materials. Don't you kind of try to gather materials oh, yeah. for people in each town or something? Um, it's something I do every week wherever I perform. I ask my fans to uh, bring comedy CDs or books on tape or music CDs or uh, movies or Nintendo games and bring them to the venue, which would be the Pipeline Cafe tonight and tomorrow, Right. and uh, drop them off, and they'll go into a big box, and the Leukemia Lymphoma Society will pick them up on... Uh, Saturday or Sunday or Monday and drop them off at cancer centers here in Honolulu so there are people that are going through chemo and radiation can uh, enjoy comedy and, and have some kind of entertainment while they're in the infusion center because there's nothing in there. I was there for eight months and you know they still had the magazines from uh, like the you Carter know, administration or yeah, something. Yeah, from Robert Kennedy being assassinated you know okay. and it's, it's just you can only read that so many times. And uh, I do it everywhere. I was in Tempe, Arizona at the Improv there, and people brought in over a 1,000 CDs in one weekend. I mean, it was unbelievable. Oh. And it went to, they divided it up. All the stuff that was appropriate for children went to Children's Hospital and St. Joe's. Everything else went to Mayo and St. Luke's. And, I mean, that's a really big thing. I You're mean, doing good these work. People, these people are not expecting it. So, you know, they're in the hospital, and all of a sudden somebody walks in with a big box of stuff and goes here. And especially... Uh, this is really the right time of year to do it because we just passed Thanksgiving and I have a lot to be thankful for and Christmas is coming up in uh, 16 days or whatever it is. So, I mean, it's, you know, cancer doesn't take off for the holidays and there are people that are in the hospital that are going through that and they can't come tonight or tomorrow. So, but you can bring it to them. That's very cool of you. It doesn't do. have to be me. I'm not telling anybody to buy my CD and donate it. Bring uh, what you want, basically. Yeah. And you don't have to go out and get a new CD if you have something used at home that you want to donate or maybe it's something that you really like and you want to turn somebody on to it you yep. know and uh because you know there's all different kinds of people in the hospital you know that need it you can't uh, you know the hospital said gee we don't know about m&m and like this kind of stuff you know and i said well what about people that listen to that that are going through that treatment yeah you just want to help I mean, them they're not going to want to listen to yanni i mean you know <laughs> i mean i tried yanni when i was on chemo and uh it's not bad, actually. If you listen to it loud enough, the cancer cells look for the quickest exit out of your body. But um, Musical treatment. I did a radio young. show. You know, John Tesh has a radio show now. I do. So I was one of his first guests, and, I, and I, was make, I said something about Yanni to him, and then he told me that he's friends with Yanni and that uh, he was playing volleyball with him in Santa Monica, 
and that Yanni dove to like make some shot and he missed it and you know just landed in the sand <laughs> and John Tess said Katara would have made that shot <laughs> <laughs> that Yanni got upset you got to be into New Age guys to yeah. really get that. No, that went over That's really bizarre side. that John Tesh would even come up with something like that. He won me over in his book with that joke. That's a that very was, good one. Yeah, for him? That's it. That impresses me even from him. Robert Schimmel, it's going to be good to see you this evening. And then tomorrow, people can grab tickets, Pipeline Cafe, get them at the door. You can still get them at Hawaii's Natural High. 926-3000 is their number. You're the man. Thanks. Aloha, brother. Hey, this is Robert Schimmel, and you're listening to The Man, Dave Lawrence.